is evidence that some human beings have been actually abducted by non-human entities. I know it sounds far-fetched, but it's true, because a book published later this week collects together some of their claims. Now, among the most remarkable is the case of Police Constable Alan Godfrey, who had a close encounter, a very real kind, on a dark winter's night in 1980. Now, while on patrol, he reported sighting what appeared to be a spaceship. And although he has no conscious memory of what happened next, under hypnosis, he recalls an alien called Joseph beckoning him towards a table. And then some smaller aliens and a dog appeared, tugging and pulling him towards the table and forcing him to lie down. And then Joseph began an examination of Police Constable Godfrey while the creatures tried to take his shoes and socks off. Now suddenly it was all over and Police Constable Godfrey was sitting back in his police car and now he is sitting with us here on the breakfast time sofa. It's an extraordinary story, isn't it, really? Uh, <clears throat> you, you recollect things in your mind and you recollect other things only as a result of hypnosis. Can we start with the first bit? What were you actually doing that night and what, what did you see? Well, I was driving the uh, Panda car uh, along Burnley Road when he told me didn't. And uh, I came across this strange craft blocking the road. Describe it to me. Well, it was about 20 feet high, about 14 feet wide. Uh, it was a diamond-shaped object, hovering about five feet off the ground. Now, at this point, you didn't see anybody, did you? Uh, no, I didn't see anything but other than that. Did you approach it? I got within about 20 feet of it. And then you went back to your car to report it, did you? No, I didn't get out of the car. Ah. I didn't want to get out of the car. You didn't? No. <laughs> but you, you got on the blur, did you? I got on the radio, both radios, the uh, VHF in the car and the UHF personally that we carry yeah and i got no response at all they didn't work no was that unusual not in that particular area there are black spots yeah. in the area but the, the radios have worked there since and then you left the scene did you the next thing i remember was i was at the other side of where the object had been driving the car away away did you report it when you got back i certainly did mm. i thought you were crackers presumably yeah they did yeah. <laughs> now then as a result of hypnosis a lot of that story has been filled in, hasn't it? Now, what, is, what do you recollect from the result of the hypnosis? Well, as I say, I have no conscious memory of what I said under hypnosis. The only thing I, could, I can go off is uh, the hypnotic regressions were videotaped. Yeah. And uh, I, I think there was about three or four tapes done. And when I actually was allowed to see them at the end of the session, uh, it was quite frightening. What you'd said under hypnosis? Mm. So what, what, tell me the other story now, the one that they, they drew out under hypnosis. Well, under hypnosis, uh, when I see the craft itself, as I said before, I didn't get out of the car consciously. I find myself getting out of the car, and uh, for some reason, I have no idea why, uh, a strange, very powerful beam of light is shone towards me, which blinds me. I jump back in the car in panic, and then there is some sort of a blackout. And after the blackout, I wake up in some sort of an examination room. I see. So, uh, this spaceship, or whatever it is, uh, did you see that in your recollected...? Uh... Yes, everything in under hypnotic regression, everything was accurate right up to... The bit that... The when I got out of the car, it. yes. Okay, well, describe this creature to me, this man. Well, it was a humanoid, or of human appearance, is about six feet high. But not quite a human being, you think? Well, he had a human appearance. Yeah. Uh, he, he had a beard, and he, he wore some sort of a skull cap, and he wore like a white gown. He was very pleasant in appearance. He wasn't at all frightening to look at. Okay, now you've, you've got yourself into this room. What goes on there? Who else is there? <clears throat> there were, uh, I think I said there was eight. Uh, small three-foot eye creatures that transpirated during the hypnotic regression uh, as robots. Uh, were you in a normal room or were you in a spaceship rather like uh, Doctor Who's time capsule? Were you in something as kind uh, of... It looked bigger than his capsule. Yeah. You know, it doesn't look very big, does it? Really? Yeah. <laughs> but inside it, yes, very, I would say it's very similar. And then they, what, they tried to undress you, didn't they, at one point? Take your shoes and socks off. Why? Why was that? <laughs> Well, this is one of the funny things about it. When I got back to the station, I found that my left boot was split and I had a burn mark on the instep mm -hmm. of my left foot. And in the hypnotic regression, they actually examined my left foot. Now, that's remarkable to me. With the other evidence of the other police officers seeing the craft as well. Isn't it? 
How did your experience end in this place you were with, with these people? <clears throat> uh, the doctor woke me up. We never actually got to an ending. Yeah. Uh, I was wired up to some heart machines, yeah. and they completely went off the scale. I was in such stress that the, both doctors stopped, mm. stopped the hypnotic regressions. Now tell me, what do you make of it all? Do you believe now in UFOs, or, or what? <clears throat> or are you convinced that those things actually happen to you, or, or it's just in your mind somewhere as an imagination or a dream or something like that? Well, the UFO certainly exists. You're uh, sure? Of that, yes, it was a nuts and bolts craft. I'm, I think I'm quite capable of seeing something from 20 feet. Uh, well, if I said to you, anything, you take, anything you say will be taken down and used in evidence, you would say that you saw that thing? Uh, yes, I would, swear on, I would swear on the Holy Bible. You what would. I saw that day, I've seen nothing of the like, except in science fiction films. And what other thoughts have you had about the whole experience? Uh, the abduction part, well, I've thought about it. I've thought, well, perhaps it's something that I've read about and seen as Doctor Who. Mm. And because of my experience, it somehow got jumbled up. Yeah. Or it actually happened. Yeah. It's a good story, isn't it? I think it's wonderful. Yeah? I mean, that, that's a whole, a whole series of Doctor Who's. Well, I mean, what do you make of it, Colin? I mean, you, you work in the fiction of this. I mean, he is saying this isn't fiction. He is saying, I actually saw that thing. I mean, sitting here listening to the story, I cannot do anything but totally believe it. Yeah. And viewed by any objective standard, I think that it's perhaps naive of us to think that we are the only things that exist in this huge universe. Nicola, what do you think of all that? I, thought, I think it's rather pompous to think that we're the only people mm. around. Um, that there isn't possible, possibly life somewhere else without, you know, we don't have the facts of everything. So I think it's rather pompous to think we're the only people. Alan, and you I are taken very seriously, I mean, aren't you, by, by people who... who uh, who study these things. I mean, what, what do they say about your experience? Are they also convinced that you actually went through this experience and those things and those people were actually there? I think they are, yes. I think the UFO investigators that came to interview me, uh, one of them being a high-ranking police officer from the Greater Manchester Police Force, uh, he really gave me a grilling. Yeah. Uh, as he obviously is very experienced in it. And I think, well, they are convinced. Yeah. I mean, we did, I saw a UFO, mate. no mistake, they do exist. There is nothing on this earth will ever tell me any different. Well, I mean, if you say it like that, I just cannot, as uh, Nicholas says, possibly believe otherwise. Thank you very much for telling the story. Absolutely fascinating, and uh, if anything else happens to you, let us know. <laughs> there we are. I'm sitting here in a cold sweat. Follow that, David Icke. <laughs> Actually, interestingly, wasn't there a, a couple in America called The Hills who went through exactly the same experience? I think they went I through hip so, yeah. yeah, they went through hypnosis, and, and the way it's described it, I read an article, it's exactly the way they described it, you know? Up to the point where they went in the craft, they could remember everything, then bang. And on the hypnosis, they described the same sort of things as you did. There are many, many cases of uh, abductions in this country that I've, I've, I know about now. Oh dear. And um, there's quite <laughs> several under hypnotic regression. Uh, there were three girls in Shropshire, uh, they had a similar experience. And under hypnosis, they come up with very, very similar inside the McCraft and very similar beings in it. It is a very, very convincing <laughs> story to tell. Take we'll move on that. quick. And nobody's going to shake you, are they? Thank you very much. It was in the skies over the Midlands this week. Did people see a flying saucer or didn't they? Well, John Hurley, you're a bit of a local expert when it comes to uh, UFOs. There were quite a few sightings this week, were there not? Yeah, from Monday um, evening from 11.50 till about uh, 1 a.m. on Tuesday morning. How, how many in all were there? 131 calls. Is that an unusual number? Uh, exceptionally, exceptionally. What did these people think that they actually saw? Well, they all saw, well, most of them saw an orange glowing ball with a green light on top. Um, started off, off in Bromsgrove, through the Birmingham area, Rigid Yardley, Sutton Caulfield, Streetly, um, through to Stone in Staffordshire, and then through to Huddersfield, Leeds, and right to the Lake area. You describe it as one of the best sightings ever? It, certainly, yeah. Okay, well, for the sceptics amongst you, here's the latest film evidence which claims to prove we are definitely not alone. Now, a Swiss farmer took this film as the flying saucer dodged around the pines. When it landed, he says it was 20 feet across. Now, seeing spacecraft is one thing, being taken aboard them is definitely another. We'll be talking to Linda Taylor and Alan Godfrey, who say they've done just that. They're in another part of our building at the moment for reasons which will become apparent very shortly. They're with our own newcomer, Debbie Davis. Debbie. 
Thanks, Andy. Well, both Linda and Alan say they've seen flying saucers. Not only that, but that they've actually been abducted and taken on board these UFOs. Linda, can you just briefly describe to me what sort of people did you see on board the spacecraft? They were very tall, around about 6'6", six, six, and they had navy blue coveralls on, right up to the neck. They were sort of dark skin, yellowy, sort of grey skin, slanted eyes and very black hair. But that's not something that you can remember in your conscious memory, no, is it? No, not at all. It's only in your subconscious, which that's is why correct. we've brought Joe Keaton in, who's a hypnotist. Now, Joe, I hope you're going to help them unlock their memories by taking them back to a subconscious state. Can you now prepare Linda and Alan for hypnosis, please, for a close encounter of what happened to them? Would you both make yourself more comfortable? Come further down in your chair, please. <clears throat> Try and rest your head so that it won't go too far back. You see, if your head falls forward, your throat will be restricted. Now, don't close your eyes. Well, we will be joining Debbie and, in fact, seeing more of those, uh, those two people later on in the programme and perhaps reliving some of those moments in their subconscious. It should be very interesting indeed. But for the moment, we'll leave... Well, there's a very lively debate there in soccer hooliganism. I suspect that's the subject we'll be coming back to before the end of this new series of Central Weekend. I'm actually in another part of the studio, as you, uh, in, in the building rather, as you obviously know, because we've been go undergoing hypnosis here. And uh, we have two of our guests tonight, Linda Jones and Alan Godfrey. L Alan actually hasn't gone under as such yet, but Linda has. And Joe Keaton, you've been managing to take Linda back to one of the moments when she was able to go aboard or at least confront something which she couldn't explain. Now, she thinks it was some kind of spacecraft, some UFO that she can't explain. How far did you actually get with her? Oh, we got her to a point of such extreme terror, and you were in the people yes, in the I, studio I whilst it, yeah. the heart was racing, the breathing uh, was uh, accelerated. She was looking at something that frightened her, and then very, very slowly, she couldn't really explain what it was. First, it was a ball coming out of the river. Then she said, "It's above the river." And then she says, gone to the top of the tip. We'll be and gradually, she slipped, whether into a deeper or not. That's when she started talking to us. OK, well, Linda, I know, is still obviously a bit groggy at the moment. She'll be talking to us later on in the programme. It is fascinating, I can promise you. There'll be more of that later. We're going to take a break now. Then we'll be asking why some men feel compelled to dress as women. Some of them are... <laughs> Nice little arrangement that, wasn't it? Welcome back. From now until midnight, we'll be hearing from perfectly sane, respectable people who say they've been kidnapped by creatures from outer space. Now, the latest evidence that we don't have the universe to ourselves comes in a remarkable piece of film taken by a Swiss farmer. Now, it appears to show a spacecraft cruising above some pine trees. Now, you can see it. Skeptics should note that the swaying of the trees as the craft passes overhead is something which we are told is very hard to fake indeed. Well, something like that, it seems, was seen over the West Midlands, very conveniently for us, I might add, this week as well, and 57 people called in to say that they'd actually seen it. Some of them, I also know, lived in the uh, Solihull area. I wonder if there's anyone here actually from the Solihull area that saw anything strange in the skies over the last couple of days. I asked you earlier on, actually, and nobody said a word, but never mind. <laughs> I do know that there were two people travelling in the vicinity. next to you was with you. Yeah, what yeah, did you think it was, Fred? Well, it was a very, very bright light. Uh, say a star was that size, uh, this was that size. And it sort of went round that way rather than over or Yeah, you, or you, You've way. done a lot of driving around over the years. Have you ever seen anything like that in never, the sky before? Never, no, never. And it <coughs> stayed, in, stayed in the sky for some time and then quite suddenly it disappeared. And you've got no explanation as to what that might be? No, yeah. I thought it was a plane at first, but uh, I then realised it wasn't because there were no flashing lights with it or anything like that. Yeah. It was just one big bright Glow, light. Wasn't it? Yeah, brilliant light. So the yeah. pair of you accept that you've seen something oh, that you uh, might my describe? Wife, my wife yeah. saw it as well. As a uh, UFO? Would you call it a UFO? I would, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, we said perfectly sane, rational people here this evening. Fred and 
Yes, Brian, no, thanks very much indeed for that. Well, apart from those who say they may have seen something, we also have with us tonight, as we were seeing earlier on, two people who claim that they've actually been on board something.